Uh, the next person I was thinking we could go for was uh, Marvin. I'll put the link Big down career. in the private chat. Uh, oh, I really need to. Um, if we figure to keep doing this, I need to buy a new screen. Yes. So that's Marvin's. And Marvin, you're here. So this time I'll remember an app. Oh. Surprise! <laughs> Last minute. You know. Don't worry, I can see your camera, so I know if you're not doing anything, <laughs> that shouldn't be up. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Didn't Good morning, man. So soon. <laughs> Don't like worry. Like surprise. <laughs> We're trying to be quick for now. Uh, so yeah, uh, is there anything we should know, Marvin, before we start? Um, yeah, um, I'm a PhD student from Germany, so my my art portfolio isn't hundred percent up to date. I have been very busy with my bachelor's degree recently so i couldn't update the stuff or i couldn't post the stuff that i did over the past six months uh, yet i did a little the little barrel is uh, and the environment scene with the pickaxe they are from the last six months but the rest is a tiny bit older but i still would like some feedback on those because they still kind of represent what i yeah, have been doing over the last three years of 3d art well, you want to start with yeah. this one, Amit? Uh, I like that you start. You know, it gives me a good base. Uh, to, yeah. To, oh, to you. Oh, you want me to? Okay, I'll throw the canvas. <laughs> throw the canvas out. Uh, so I mean, so uh, let's see here. So, three D environment or three D artist? I don't know if you want to do environments or not. Usually, uh, environment is my focus. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I want it to be my focus through my internship uh, in the last half uh, year. I discovered my passion for it. Oh, Ironically, yeah. I did environments before, but yeah. I wasn't really thinking about getting into it back then. But I learned about Unreal Engine and stuff in the, over the last six months, and now um, I kind of fell in love with everything. I like this one. Yeah, it's uh, so okay. So if we're looking at environments, and that's kind of like your focus, um, I'll just grab some of the older environments that you have, and then we'll see like where there's where there's progress and then where there's things that have kind of not uh, shifted yet. Yeah, um, but so, I have to yeah. mention before, maybe mm -hmm. uh, those are kit bashed. At least this is, this was in my, like in my first half month or two in 3D and we had to uh, exercise to create a still life. So I kit bashed this stuff because I obviously wasn't able to model any of this. So wait, so when, just, when you say uh, kit bash, is it like grabbing uh, from like marketplaces and such? Uh, Polyhaven, for example like oh, yeah, the free okay. website and yeah, yeah. um sketch trap and stuff yeah okay cool so so everything is basically you're working on composition then with this one yeah that the, the, those are primarily composition works exactly yeah uh, that that's why i wrote a composition and lighting study because uh i didn't oh, yeah. want to mislead people <laughs> yeah but you know how um, often i don't read true. this you shouldn't have said this was a lifetime study because now we're gonna grab it to put it in the <laughs> shelf. Uh, so I gotta uh, learn um, because lighting is, is one I of mean, my biggest weaknesses. That's that's how you learn, though, right? Um, yeah. So what I'll say before we give it to to the the lighting professional uh, is just looking at scale of things. So knowing the size of stuff, like right now, I would say these cassettes feel like they're. I mean, I know this is two years ago, so I'm not expecting you to go back and uh, adjust things. But these cassettes feel like they're maybe about half the size. They might be a little, maybe not that that small, but they're smaller. I can feel this. There's a size discrepancy, especially with the TV. Um, and then the the Game Boy. That Game Boy feels like a brick when I think about it. Like it's so stupidly big. Um, yeah, true. But yeah, oh man, my dog's scratching the door. Uh, but it's, so for me, it's scale and then watching out for these types of things. So the, you've got this line here. So this is like the edge of the table, I assume. Um, and then you have this camera lining up exactly with this. This is what we call a tangent. So you're going to want to watch out for tangents. Maybe you already know this because this is two years old. But uh mm -hmm. Yeah, when you get tangent lines, you got to be really careful with those. Like there's this one too, where this one's not as bad, but it's there. So basically where the, the cartridge meets meets the line uh, on the wall. So I should avoid that those things align with each other. Yeah, it, 
it's better to either have it go over it and break the line or to go under mm -hmm. it and just avoid the line. And it's the same, same here. And usually breaking the line helps you remove uh, another issue that you tend to see with environments is laser lines. So there's like super straight line here. Mm -hmm. Like, of course, it's really straight in the environment so that, or in like the actual prop. So you can't really do much with that. Uh, but the camera can be used if brought a little bit closer to the TV or the camera's brought down a little bit more. Uh, the rendering camera to get that edge to break because like if this goes above that edge now you have a straight edge and then it drops and then it goes back to this one so it's just a matter of like kind of getting away from those those elements uh, i'm gonna get my dog because he is just going to town on the door trying to get in here i'll be right back you can you can probably jump in don't forget to unmute no worries <laughs> I'm multitasking uh i guess i'll share my screen oh now one computer so you will see double boom 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 all right so for me uh when i look at uh, your work in terms of um lighting it's it's what i call flat it means it's losing values and it means you're uh, it's very common for students and even beginners and a lot of professionals really they have a tendency to add like god rays and fog because it's a lot of fun the problem is when they use a lot of fog and god rays it comes in front of your image and it flattens the values of your image uh, what i do like is you're trying to have a focal point i think that's very interesting uh and as all the points that jeremiah obviously uh, mentioned those as well you want to think about but what i'm looking for more is to enhance some of the values and how light actually works so we're talking about just pushing some of the details making sure you have the high that's correctly and you're kind of making sure that the focal point is there maybe in some cases uh, i will probably in some cases also start going a bit more brighter on the source you know because it's, it's a bit flat and the tv tends to be bright if you remember looking at the tv in a dark room you know it's not supposed to be the same value it's the it's supposed to be the brightest area so don't be afraid to kind of see how bright you actually want it to be but then you also need to balance it out with the rest of, of the of the environment you kind of making sure the light's hitting correctly you know making sure that they're bright areas bright details kind of looking at the spots making sure that the shadows are correct kind of hitting the right areas and this requires you to understand lighting of course because you can't just use one light necessarily for this um in terms of this uh, i would also in some cases make sure that this one is a bit more brighter as well because you don't want to have a, a uniform effect basically as i call it when i teach my students these things i want to avoid the uniform effect uh, so i would kind of you know make maybe break it out a bit depending on the focal point i'm guessing this is the focal point uh generally but you also want to avoid the darkest area so you can see you know you can see a very quick difference in that it's showing more effectivity it's showing more spectral effect it's showing more uh, areas obviously uh, the the weakness that jeremiah um, also mentioned is your construction of the scene doesn't help so you have a different lighting you have a different construction of your scene the tangents and the placement of things you want to make sure you place things in, in a very interesting way that it kind of enhances your piece and um, focus on the focal point as well there are obviously obviously different things I would also continue to play with, which is just generally a color tone. So I will probably you know play around with the cyan, uh, which is eliminating your already warm color to kind of get that more uh, realistic but um, uh, retro look. So I will probably try and play around with it because those screens back in its day had more of a blue light more than anything so you could kind of get that feeling so uh, that's my quickest feedback for you uh, again as a reference uh, your my quick paint over your my quick paint over you know it has a different depth and feeling for it does that make sense yeah definitely it's always fun to me to if professionals give me feedback how quickly they improve my work always drowns me a little if i get too full of myself and stuff is very common, it's very common to do that. Like that. Yeah, yeah, it's I, very common. I see one tutorial and think, yes, I got, I got it now. I speak with one person. I didn't got shit, man. <laughs>
<laughs> you know that doesn't go away, ever. It, I, I'm afraid it doesn't. Hasn't oh, yeah, gone done. in the past three years, and I think it won't. Yeah, it doesn't ever go, go away. It never goes away. Like I can't even hear. revel in it. Yeah, I mean, I can give Jeremiah my stuff, and even if he's not lighting artist, he's gonna pick up on stuff as well, you know. And I'd be like, "Fuck, if Jeremiah <laughs> was not the lighting artist, is picking up on that, I'm suck." <laughs> another set of eyes, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, um, hopefully that's useful. Uh, do you, Jeremiah? Do you wanna uh, jump on uh, some of the other pieces as well? I, yeah, I wanted to look at this one because this one's quite interesting. This chain here actually looks like. It almost looks like it's painted, but uh, as we go down, it, is is this is that painted or no? Uh, no, the, um, so this project is a uh, pretty interesting. I just mentioned I learned uh, Unreal recently. Yeah. So this was my um, project to learn to create stuff in Unreal. This is actually right. also a mix of uh, my stuff and uh, Quixel stuff, so the bridge okay. stuff. And um, I played a lot with the materials, so blueprint and with the material blueprints and stuff. And uh, I think I might have just uh, messed up a little. But the uh, moss is painted, actually. It's vertex painted. So I okay. used, uh, I created yeah, some moss shader and try, tried to make it look a little older or a right. little well, well done. Yeah, it's like aged and kind of like. It's you're implying it's damp down here, and the moss is just kind of starting to take over everything. And, yeah. Uh, so I, the things that I wanted to highlight with this, so this shot's quite interesting. Uh, I think these being centered up, usually I try to like off, like throw them off to the side, like using the thirds and just kind of either putting it here, or here, or framing it in a way that it's just not centered up. This one's not necessarily bugging me. But usually, I would say I try to avoid centering things. Um, when I look at this shot, this is when I started going, "Oh, is this like so? What is there anything in here that you built directly, or is this more like you were saying?" Oh, uh, environment lighting study. I tried to create. Yeah. This was the focus was for me on building environments, so I wanted to build something that could also be a level in a game or something. That's right. why I have a little walkthrough in the end. Yeah, that and video also, is cool. And also to um, play around with everything in Unreal, like materials, um, nanite lighting and stuff, because I used to work with Maya only, which yeah. is, and Unreal was like a life changer for me because what, <laughs> I can see lighting change in real time and fog doesn't render like an hour? Jesus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So when I look at this scene, then I'll look at, uh, I'll highlight some of the more technical things. So with these being in uh coming in from other sources like if you're you're not building them you bring them in from like polyhaven or quixel making sure that there's surface information that's more micro for the lighting to kind of play with it's like another way to affect your roughness information so the roughness value may be correct but if there's no like micro detail on the surface to imply this the surface accurately then the roughness the overall image feels strange so it might be really mild here, and maybe it's just the compression or like the depth of field. Maybe this is a little blurred. Um, I would definitely look into detail normals and adding those types of like surface information that you can tile at a high rate to in order to get like uh, to get that information there. And it can be uh, a lot of people are like, okay, I use detail normals and I tile it a lot, and it looks all right. Just keep an Keep it in mind that you can use a mask to control the strength of detail normals, as well as like the the concept that detail normals should be on everything. They help imply so much information. Unless it's like an extremely smooth surface, then then that smooth surface is going to have like scratches in the in the roughness to show information. Um, when it comes to this type of shader that you're working on here, I would try and uh, in the shader build a clamp to try and tighten up. Uh, the transition between the the type of uh, mossy material and the wood. That way it doesn't look so soft. Uh, usually it's going to transition a lot harsher. And then, uh, yeah, I wouldn't... Uh, I want to play this video. This video is quite interesting. I would say the, the thing that bugs me when I watch this video is how low the ceiling is all the time. Like having it go up and down would be nice. Uh, and then the lantern being so far away from you is very disjointed feeling, right? 
if it usually you would feel it like right here like it'd be quite close and you'd know you're it would imply itself that you're carrying a lantern um and then these slow turns really like emphasize how intense the motion blur is it's like being able to either turn quickly or like toning down the motion blur and and speeding up your your turns as well man i feel really uncomfortable at this dead end uh it, I that was the, that was the goal yeah it was yeah it's kind good. of a horror scenario yeah i'm glad I that was uh <laughs> like you do a turnaround if you start doing a turnaround and there's just a silhouette there you're now adding story which is even better. True, that's, uh, that's that, been yeah. a fun idea. That's that's um, me on this one. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, <clears throat> for me, um, I, I won't spend too much time on. I'll share my screen as well uh, on this one. Um, because I'm quite visual when I give feedback. Because uh, I don't have the necessary vocabulary to explain things anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, when I look at this kind of presentation, and this is very common, it's, it's kind of right there, but there's no understanding of, unless I watch the video, but still, it's, there's no logical or creative reason for why this one is so bright and everything else is dark. So. I would always try and make sure that you kind of give a reason. Is this perfect? No, technically it should be on the left side because your specular effect is coming from the left side. So really I should have done the other side very quickly. But either way, you want to make sure that there's a reason to understand that there's light coming into the environment. It's brightening up. Obviously I've done some changes with the, with the color tone as well to kind of balance things out. So why do I do that when I do lighting? So when you do, for me, when I do scenes and when I give feedback of scenes, unless there's a good reason, a story reason, or an or emotional reason. When the scenes are dark, such as caves, and there's a lot of brown, there's a lot of dark tones, I actually throw in a, a, a different color, like a blue, green, something to kind of cool down the image and give that separation in the image that's lacking when you have all the colors. Because when the light bounces around and you have an, uh, the, the lighting you have chosen, you end up with a very flat image. So also your color um it's not white you know this kind of at that present time that's supposed to be quite warmer and you wouldn't necessarily get that kind of we call white clipping uh, at least uh, in in for lighting artists i think it's the same for any artist that uses these terms white clipping and then there's black clipping you know white clipping is when it gets to the point you're losing texture detail uh you can see that it's very hot and you know, a lamp at that time is warm and it's not necessarily that hot and it doesn't necessarily spread on this level, right? It doesn't make sense to me why it's bright below the table, for example, uh, where's this light coming from, where's this light coming from? It looks like there's no shadow casting maybe you have on. So, and there's spectral effects on this very glossy uh, metal, I'm assuming. So these are the details I pay attention to. I even look at the specs on the darkness here and I go, okay, there's something that doesn't fit uh, what you're doing. Um, so the color of the lantern and the intensity and the range is definitely something to think about. Um, you know, uh, I think those are the key things that I noticed that I would work a little bit on. Um, the other things such as the flickering light and, and these things as well but i think this one takes too much of the focal point so when uh jeremiah and me, me as well when i talk about focal point it's you don't want the brightest point to uh, point to take the attention away from what you want to show you want to show this but you you're having a competing attention between the object compositionally wise rule of third looks great you have the basics in place but because this is bright i'm also looking at this one so that's why this this is very important to get right so you have a decent level of exposure on this light and it's covering the right direction and the right color and then you have the the light there so if that's difficult, and it is difficult for a lot of people who are not learning uh, from a lighting artist, you could just use a very diffuse omni light or, or a point light 
just to get the light correct and then you could use a spotlight instead to kind of control your lighting for this kind of gameplay even cutscenes so you would have that light there and kind of control the range a little bit and you would have four of them instead because a point light uh, that you are not costing shadow that's good but if, if it was costing 100% shadow that's very expensive right that's six spotlights so normally we will uh, use a non-shadow light and we will control it kind of like we were trying to do and then we would use a uh, cheap uh, spotlight to kind of focal point the area so it kind of brightens the image a bit. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Definitely okay. makes sense. That one was a tough uh, piece for me because I got a little lost in it. I wanted to do everything perfectly, but it was actually only a learning experience. So I don't know. I got especially in the end, I got a little too involved when I should have dropped the project, maybe or just finished it. So. I no, no, can see I mean, where I missed some stuff because I was a little tunneled in the end. I didn't see the things that I maybe would see now with a little distance. I think you should be happy that you're doing something and you're producing something. I don't think it, it matters at the end of the day. Many people try something and never finish. So, you know, give you clap yourself at the back for giving it a shot. I think that's very important technology. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Making sure you post at the end is, is important. Oh, yeah, I wanted to show this really quickly. So I think we could maybe we can jump to the next portfolio. But uh, when you look at this image, you're talking about levels and like your like super hot spot and then super dark points. Uh, I made this level checker thing, which basically just blasts a color in a range. Uh, and it just basically what I try and do is color the the white points and then the black points. So when you have a image where it becomes quite dark. And this is just a rough estimation, of course, right? But it's like when it becomes quite dark, just know that that's information that in post you can't move around. So, like if I do a levels on your image to try and to try and bring those those dark areas up, you can see like there's pixelation in here, and that's literally like two bits of of data or maybe three of information that we can get out of those shadows. So, making sure that you're uh, properly exposing everything while also figuring out where your, your focal points are at. This can also help you with focal points as well, as you can see where where like the highlights or the hot spots are at. And it's the same with, so you wanna avoid the, the black, but you also wanna avoid like full, full white pixels. Those are where it's just basically blowing out. Um, yeah, just wanted to highlight those. Very things. cool, definitely. And uh, this is more important I mean, there's always a place for, for breaking the rules, but you only do it when you're experienced, but also you have to understand the context. In a game context, uh, you want to have some visibility, right? And it's very common in horror games, and I I always comment it with horror games. For some reason, people think you need to make everything dark, black. You don't need to. If you understand color and range and values, you can make it pretty bright and scary game. It's just you don't need to make it pitch black but like you don't see anything. You know, uh, in isolation being one of my favorite uh, games, you know, it doesn't necessarily go pitch black in the game at all, but it just used light and color and, and sound so well that it just works. And that's a reference I like to use a lot. <clears throat> uh, so, yeah, are you having questions? Um, yeah. My, uh... So it's like, how do you how do you do this for checking exposure? So I'm basically I'm just adding a gradient map on top of the image and then. I'm remapping the gradients kind of like you would in Substance uh, Designer and just yep. applying the colors where I want them. So if you really want to get just the clipping points, you can control like where that happens. Um, and then I just save it as like a an action script. Yep. So I just and record you, it happening. And if you want to learn how to do it, maybe you will. Maybe there will be a tutorial in the coming weeks showing you how to do it in detail. Who knows? <laughs> You know, but the, yeah. <laughs> uh, anything else you want to go through, Jeremiah, from Marvin, or are we good? Uh, I think we're. I think we're all right. Because I was looking at the the rest of the the portfolio. I need to like fix my screen sharing, but uh, I think the other scene. Let me double check it really fast here. Yeah, the other one was just a the prop challenge, and um, I think that's more of just like it's cool that you did the <laughs> the challenge. Let me uh window there we go um but yeah there's not there's not too much to add here other than like making sure that um 
Oh, I'm just got to share the, the screen. So I'll wait for a second. Yeah, no worries. Um, making sure that the information that you're adding on the surface is usually it's more in the roughness and not so much in the normal maps. Because normal map, like surface changes that happen in normal maps are going to be implying very heavy uh, information or, or heavy things happening to the surface. Whereas like instead of like these dips that are in there, you could be adding those in the roughness and then the seam could be in the normal just to explain how the, the I guess, plastic was molded. But um, yeah, and then just watching out for sharp edges. Doing hard surface is uh, painful. <laughs> I'm not I'm not good at hard surface. I cheat and just go to ZBrush with it. But um, yeah, yeah, hard surface is also something I struggle with. But I thought this was especially material wise was one of my better assets, so I decided to post it. Uh, I kind of it's kind of hit or miss for me because I'm still mm. didn't click just yet. I I saw this roughness normal thing in a video, so where you put roughness also a little normal couldn't hurt sometimes. It just to insinuate like uh i don't know some leftovers from mud or something like this yeah but uh, maybe i overdid it a little just didn't click just yet i have to put a bit more practice in yeah no worries i, I think with this plastic you just need like uh the roughness feels okay it might need subsurface for this type of material and also your um, your lighting you want to avoid that black uh core shadow you have on the middle of your uh, barrel Sure. Uh, because you can see two of your light sources and then there's a split. So you want to have the bright spot on one side and then just fade it into dark. It's going to be a better presentation. Yeah, you want to move uh, that basically to over here. Yeah. Unless you want a rim light to... Yeah. yeah. So that's about it. Hopefully that's useful, Marvin. It was definitely. Thanks, you. Thanks a lot, guys. No problem. Yeah, nice uh, thank you for showing up and uh, hopefully we see you around and uh, just going to kick you out now. Thank you so much. <laughs> Have a good day. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> um so i don't think you can get through everything we will try as, as, as best as we can to be quicker i think for the mm -hmm. next one i will do jeremiah but i think for jeremiah we can focus more on the presentation of his portfolio because he literally has hundreds of stuff in there um so i think what we can um kind of think about is uh, let's see here I was just kidding, it doesn't have this stuff. It's three stuff. This is Jeremiah that we're looking at? No, who we? Yeah, Jeremiah, yeah. yeah. It's between three stuff from level 80 or something. Yes. Oh, yeah, I remember this scene. Yeah, so I sense sarcasm in the. Because there's tons of stuff in here. Uh, no, I was I was fully <laughs> expecting a ton of like a portfolio of like hundreds. So, and so so what happened? So so what happened? Uh, the link I got from him or that I clicked was on the likes tab. Oh, so I was looking at like six hundred eighty four things. I'm like Jesus Christ, how many stuff have you been busy? busy working? And then I'm